the organizers for inviting me, especially Taikai and Fuchun. And, uh, and uh, of course, because yeah, both of my collaborators. And um, uh, so today I will talk about uh, uh, this uh, Majorana fermions in gapted and uh, gapless uh, topological superconductors. So um, I'm uh, Katie Law. You, you see this. I hope that you are enjoying your time here. And uh, uh, before, before I start, I would really like to, to thank my student, uh, uh, Chris uh, Norman Wong, who is uh, over there. And, uh, and also uh, uh, Andrew Porter, from, uh, a student of uh, Patrick. And then uh, uh, Daniel is my former postdoc with Tai Kai. He's now at, uh, at the Hong Kong University with Fu Chun. So, and, uh, so, and of course, I have to thank uh, Patrick, who introduced me to a few of my runner fermions. So um, this is the outline of, the mo of my talk. So you, you know that recently there's uh, um, a huge interest in realizing Majorana fermions in semiconducting wires uh, in proximity to S-wave superconductors. So and uh, recently in a, a group, uh, in, uh, in a, a Delft group uh, led by uh, Cohen, uh, Cohen Hoven, so he observed some zero bias peak uh, in conductance experiments, uh, probably associated with Majorana fermions. And uh, so today I will, I will talk about that. So, uh, uh, so to see if it's, uh, what they see is really Majorana fermions. And also, actually, what, what I'm going to tell you is that uh, in, in the experiment, maybe they, they, they see, it's possibly that they see some Majorana fermion, but it's also, po also possible that the zero bias peaks are actually from some localized fermionic states. So in order to tell if you have Majorana fermion or not, so recently we proposed uh, uh, to look at uh, another smoking gun of Majorana fermion, which is a Majorana fermion induced a cross energy reflection instead of, lo some of looking at some local uh, energy reflection. And then, uh, so this is uh, the main focus of, uh, of uh, this is really the mainstream focus that people try to realize Majorana fermions uh, in systems which breaks time reversal symmetry. So, Suppose all the dust is settled and everybody is happy with uh, uh, Cohen Hoven's experiment. And the question is, okay, what else can we look for? So in, uh, in the second part of the talk, I will talk about how we can realize Majorana fermions in systems which respect time reversal symmetry. Um, what, what I'm going to talk about is, uh, is quite simple, which is if you have a D-wave subconductor and then you, add, yeah, and then you have rush box, and that will give you a uh, Majorana fermion. But since you respect time reversal, what you have is not a single Majorana end state, but instead of, a, my, of two Majorana end states, and they are related by time reversal symmetry. And the, at the end, uh, I would like to talk about another uh, uh, system which support Majorana fermion. But this time, uh, which is quite kind of different, is that this system is gapless in the bulk, meaning that uh, you have some nodal uh, phases but uh, you still support Majorana fermion. But what is quite kind of surprising is that uh, the Majorana you have is not a single Majorana fermion. Indeed, you have a whole Majorana flat band. And this flat band is actually protected against the sorter. So we will we'll see uh, how that can happen. So um, in the four topics I, I just mentioned in the outline, all of them is related to this. Uh, uh, so the problem is how to see the Majorana fermion if they're if they there. Uh, one effective way of, lo of looking at it is uh, through uh, energy reflection. So I, I would like to talk a bit about this uh, uh, Majorana induced, uh, induced uh, uh, resonant energy reflection. So, this is a, so Majorana fermion will induce um, uh, resonant energy reflection. Actually, the reason is quite simple. We, uh, we, we kind of studied this a few years ago. So you know that the, the, the defining property of Majorana is that uh, the, uh, the particle equals to whole. So creating a Majorana and destroying a Majorana is the same operation. So, and so this is the self-permission property of Majorana. And this property is, uh, is quite special because if you have a Majorana in, in your, say this is a D-class, uh, which breaks time reversal symmetry, if it's a D-class topological superconductor, and then you have a Majorana end state. And then I put uh, a normal lead next to it and I try to tunnel into my superconductor. But since your Majorana is a self-emission, so your Majorana would couple with uh, the electron and hole in your normal lead with equal amplitude. And this is uh, fixed by the fact that 
your Hamiltonian has to be Hermitian. So once you have this self, once you have this constraint, it means that if you if you look at the tunneling uh, amplitude from your lead to your superconductor, you find that the tunneling the tunneling uh, probability can be written in this, this very simple way, where uh, T1 is the coupling string between the, the lead and the superconductor. So immediately you see that when the, the, the energy um, of your incoming electron matches the E0, which is the energy of your Majorana fermion, in this case it's zero energy, and immediately you see that the, the, the energy reflection probability is one. So, so that, that means that you have a resonance. This is in sharp contrary to a usual case if you want to tunnel, for example, if I have two electron leads, I want to tunnel through a dot. Uh, I want to tunnel from one lead to another lead through a dot. And then in that case, because if this is a fermionic state, and uh, this fermionic state can couple with the two leads with different amplitude, and uh, in that case, in order, to have to, in order for you to have resonance tunneling, you have to match two conditions. One is that the energy of the incoming electron has to match the energy of your, your dot here, the fermionic state here. And also, you have the T1 equals to T2. You need to find two T1 and T2. But for Majorana fermions, there's no need. That's because of the emission, uh, self emission property of your Majorana fermions. So, um, how to create Majorana fermions? A very um, a promising way now people propose is that you just put an S wave superconductor uh, next to a, uh, a, a semiconductor wire with rush bar uh, spin orbit coupling. In that case, if you look at the uh, simple Hamiltonian of your, your semiconductor wire, you have this is your kinetic term, and then you have the, the rush bar spin orbit coupling. The rush bar spin operating would split your, say, parabolic band into, into two bands. And, uh, and this is the k equal to 0. This, uh, you, have, you still have a crossing here. That's the, at the gamma point. So this crossing is protected by time reversal symmetry. But uh, you can easily break it by applying a, a, a magnetic field perpendicular to, to the wire or along the wire. And once you break it, and uh, you open a gap, as is shown in the black line here. So, and then if you tune your chemical parental here, and then induce, and then you put, it, put your whole thing next to a superconductor by in inducing a, a proximity gap, uh, tune your chemical parental here, and then you have a, actually, you can show you have an effective P-wave superconductor which uh, in that case, your, 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 your uh, superconducting wire would have Majorana end states. So uh, in the recent experiment uh, in the Delft group, uh, so they did uh, such an experiment by putting a, a, a semiconductor wire, uh, which is uh, denoted uh, by this line here. And then you, they have the, a, a, a S-wave superconductor next to it, and they have the normal lead, so they try to, try to tunnel. Uh, so in the right regime, when you apply magnetic field, you, you're supposed to have Majorana end states here. And then you, if you tunnel into it, you should see a zero bias uh, tunneling peak. And uh, indeed, this has been observed. Um, so what they see is that they, they plot this uh, the IDV, uh, 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 the current, uh, the conductance versus uh, the voltage. And uh, the different lines here, when you increase the magnetic field. Uh, so without any magnetic field, you, there's no zero bias peak. But when you increase the magnetic field to a certain regime, and then you suddenly you start seeing a zero bias peak. And uh, the question is, is this zero bias peak uh, uh, induced by Majorana fermions? So um, we look at uh, this problem. So by, um, by doing really a, a, a uh, full simulation of, uh, what, 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 uh, of the experimental system, so we have this uh, spin orbit coupled wire, and then we put a S wave superconductor next to it, and then we try to, to see what by uh, to do the uh, tunneling uh, to calculate the, the conductance in, in this case. So um, in our wire, uh, we we focus on so um, for for such a wire, you, you see that uh, uh, you may have uh, uh, multiple subbands of. Uh, so this is a schematic picture of your, of your band structure. So you see that if you have a, a magnetic field parallel to, to your wire, uh, every band is, uh, is, uh, Z, is split but because of the Zima energy. And then if your chemical potential is cut through odd number of subbands, for, exam for example, if you are here, if, you are chemical, if you tune your chemical potential here, 
and then you, ha you are in the top so-called topology non-trivial regime with Majorana. And then if you tune it in, in the area here, so your chemical potential cuts through two uh, even number of subbands, and then your, it's a, so your system is trivial. And if you go to here at the second topological regime, so you cut through three subbands, and then your system is, uh, um, is top, is support Majorana again. So by tuning the chemical potential of the wire, we see that, uh, so you, you, we see zero bias peak uh, in here with uh, the height of 2e squared over h, and then that this peak is associated with the, the, the topological non trivial regime here. And, uh, and also, if you go higher up, you go to, you see the second peak and the third peak, and so on and so forth. So, um, so now let's uh, focus on the third topological regime because experimentally they don't know how many subbands are, are occupied. And uh, if you look at here, that means that uh, we are at the third topological regime, in which case uh, uh, five uh, transverse subbands of, of your wire is occupied. What? They, they cannot, I mean, experimentally, oh, oh, oh. Yeah. yeah, experimentally, they have some back gates to tune the chemical potential. So they, they, just they, see they So that's, it's very hard to tell when you tune your back gate how much chemical potential uh, on the wire is, uh, how much you change. No, they don't see. They don't see like very sharp plateaus. And when, I mean, in the in the in the normal state, for example. So suppose if it's a if it's a a, uh, a very good wire you you create, so you are supposed to see some uh, conductance plateaus, and I don't think they see that experimentally. Yeah, this is the next step. Is it to expect my run? Is it most likely to die? How can it really die? Well, um, so. But why do you why do you need perfectly well defined? Uh, but you argue that you need to have precisely the band structure and size. And but the band structure just exists. How can you really multiply your run? No, no, the band structure is there, but. Uh, but you don't see it with perfect band scattering, which is so. No, uh, so I mean the the band structure is there, so they just don't know how many subbands are occupied. So that's. So why can't they see these subbands? Um. Yeah. Then you have the bands. Yeah. And then you do the more simple job of the outlying possibility of maximum of that. Yeah. And when you can also check that there are some bands, oh, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what experimental is doing. Yeah. So the same thing that Louis Cummings did. They don't yeah. have a they don't have a quantum but are they yeah. still part of two that is the same thing? They yeah. are part of two that is the Yeah. Okay. So Okay, now we focus on on uh, on uh, this regime. So the so suppose I mean that that, but theoretically you can you can perfectly know. Okay, you have five subbands occupied, and then um, so by increasing the the magnetic field, first you see that uh, so you, you always have this coherence peak. So in this region, it is uh, um, which is it actually it is plot here. So when uh, this uh, magnetic field along the y is zero, you see this. Uh, uh, fully, this is the fully gap, and uh, here are the coherence peaks. And then you, you, you increase your magnetic field, and suddenly, at uh, starting from a uh, certain strength of your magnetic field, which is enough to close your, your, um, uh, your bulk band gap, and then you start seeing uh, zero, zero bias peaks. So, and then you start seeing zero bias peaks. So, and uh, this zero bias peak is quite kind of robust. So you, you keep uh, uh, increasing the magnetic field, and it is still there. So so that's uh, what, what you. That's so experimentally, you, you see what, what you expected if you have Majorana fermions there. So this is uh, the experimental picture. So you increase the magnetic field, and then you here you it's, it's, uh, the the uh, the voltage bias, and then you see it, you have the coherence the coherence peak here, which is just like the coherence coherence peak you see here, and then uh, starting from a uh, certain strength of your magnetic field, you start seeing this uh, zero bias peak. So if this is, con I mean, experimentally what they see is consistent with the, the picture of having my runner fermions there. 
but is that the only uh, is that true that you can have uh, this kind of zero bias peak when you have Majorana fermion? And this is um, not quite of the full story because if you add this order into your system, and then you immediately see that, see that actually your Majorana fermion, if your if the the disorder is strong enough, actually the, the zero bias peak is gone. So this picture is exactly have has the same parameter as this picture. In the clean limit, you have this uh, Majorana. Uh, peak, but uh, here when you add the solder, you don't you don't have that. So, and uh, you increase magnetic field, you still don't see this peak. So, and uh, this is in, in the uh, when you have this order, but what you see is that so we, we try to to calculate the conductance when you have um, uh, by tuning the chemical potential and uh, the voltage bias. And, but what is interesting is that in the topological regime where you're supposed to find Majorana fermions and the Majorana peaks are gone, but in the, in the topological retrieval regime, actually in some, some of the, the regions, you, you, you start seeing this is zero bias peak. So the origin of this uh, zero bias peak is that, so you know that if you have a, a couple of bands are occupied, uh, and in, in that case, you have some fermionic uh, n sync. And your disorder occasionally can push those fermionic stays down to the edge. And then in that case, those fermionic states can induce a zero bias peak as well. So, and then what we see is that, if, for example, in this regime along this line A, so your disorder can push a, a few states down so that you have a multiple uh, small peaks here induced by uh, finite energy fermionic states, end states. And uh, at finite temperature, what you see is a single peak. So the question is, so and uh, also those uh, those fermionic end states they are actually descendants of Majorana fermions. So they they have the same conditions as they, they, they exist only when the Majorana fermions are there. So they are just a, a they are equal number of Majorana fermions. So when Majorana fermions uh, disappear, they disappear. When Majorana exists, they can exist. So it's very hard to tell experimentally if that's uh, that's really um, the zero bias peak you see is really Majorana fermion peak. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, right, right. Yeah, it is not. It's, it is not. It, 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 has, it, it doesn't have to be. But we just find, uh, so you tune your chemical potential. What you see is that it is possible for some regime that you have the, your, your disorder can push the, some fermionic states down. Yes, yes, yes. It is not a, it's not a universal feature. Yeah, you're right. So, yeah, so experimentally, is that <laughs> what, what, what to tune? So what I'm going to show is that, yeah, yeah, so if you go to very low temperature, and then you start seeing, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, what I'm thinking about, even when you also check the potential, for example, yes. do you expect the drift peak go to zero voltage, then immediately go away from the zero voltage, rather than stay at the zero voltage? Yes, 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 yes. But um, the thing is that it is, when you have disorder, it is possible to have some regime, some parameter regime, which as you see here, we, tune, we really tune the chemical potential. But, uh, but somehow that whole bunch of states, they, 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 they stay, yeah, they, they just stay there. So, yeah, 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 right, yeah. Yeah, so when, when you do that, so this, it's possible that you are in a trivial regime, but you see this peak. So now we have this question of, um, okay, if the, the local energy reflection cannot really tell if you have Majorana fermions, and uh, we come to a, another amazing property of Majorana fermion, which is that you know a Majorana fermion has only half degrees of freedom of a usual Dirac fermion. And two spatially separated Majorana fermion, they can form a non-local fermionic state. So and this property actually allows your Majorana fermion to induce some non-local uh, correlation effects for your currents. So and uh, the first paper on this uh, subject is uh, um, actually uh, introduced in a nice paper, a uh, very beautiful paper by uh, uh, Nelson and in Binecker's group. So they, they uh, study the situation when you have a 2D topological insulator and you know that uh, you have some edge states. Uh, going around some fermionic edge, edge states, 
but if you put a, a superconductor on top of your edge state and then some ferromagnet, and then in, in between, in, at the interface between the ferromagnet and the superconductor, you have uh, Majorana fermions. So in this one, Majorana fermion, if the, if the superconductor the, is, short, is short enough, in that case, the, the two Majorana fermions, they can couple to each other. And uh, they, they, they deviate away from the zero energy. Instead, they, have, they can have uh, EM, uh, so also some, some uh, finite energy EM. So now you can ask the question, if I tunnel, if I try to tunnel uh, into the superconductor through this Majorana state, so what can happen? Uh, instead, what is amazing is that instead of having uh, a resonant energy reflection, what you see is that the local energy reflection is totally suppressed. So it is totally suppressed. And um, so it means that you, you don't see local energy reflection. But what is interesting is um, and another process can come in, which is called a cross entry reflection. In this case, an electron comes in, and then instead of reflected as a whole, which is a local entry reflection, your electron comes in can reflect as a whole at another lead. So, and then that means that in this kind of so called cross entry reflection process, each lead will contribute one electron into your superconductor. They form a Cooper pair and, 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 and goes to the drain. So, and one can ask, how can I measure this, this kind of process? You can do it by, by measuring the shut noise. Because um, for a local, for usual local energy reflection process, you tunnel an electron into it and reflect it as a whole. So in each tunneling process, your lead on the left contribute two electrons into the superconductor. And the shut noise, you know that the so-called so Fano factor is two. So the shut noise really reveals the, the charge carrier of each tunneling event. So if it's Cooper pair, that would be 2e. So the final factor in that case is 2e. The final factor can be, me can be measured by the, uh, the current-current correlation and uh, over the, the, the basically the current. So, but in the, in the cross entry reflection process, you have an electron comes in and a hole reflected at another lead. That means that your lead contribute to one electron only at each tunneling event. So by, by measuring this, uh, local, this, this uh, the shut noise, you can see the shut noise, or the so-called Fano factor, is E instead of 2E. So, so, so this is, uh, um, so this is uh, P11 is the, is the, for example, we plot the P11 here, is the, the shut noise for one lead. If you do that over the current, that's the Fano factor, and that gives you one instead of two. But if you look at the total shut noise of the two leads, which is the sum, um, which is the sum of all the, the shut noise of lead one and lead two and the cross uh, correlation, and uh, you see that the, the shut noise is two because uh, the two leads they kind of work together, and then every time when they tunnel, you tunnel two electrons into your superconductor. So in that case, the the Fano factor is two. So the question is, can this really be measured? This shut noise, actually. Um, uh, you know that in the context of fractional quantum Hall systems, uh, in the last instance days with filling factor uh, one third, you know that uh, the, on the edge uh, you have uh, you have on the edge you have uh, particles living there with uh, with the charge e over three. For example, if the filling factor is one third in the, for the last instance, day. and uh, and then if you put two edges together, the, this uh, and then put a voltage bias, and then uh, this quasi particle can tunnel. Uh, and then that can create a current, and also we can measure the noise of this current. And uh, in the group of uh, uh, multi hybrid in, uh, in, in Weizmann Institute, so in 1997, he measured the shut noise between two quantum hall edges in the Laughlin uh, state, and then he found that um, the, the effective charge or the final factor is really E over 3. So this can be measured. And after this, uh, Laughlin and, and other people, they, they got the Nobel Prize. Uh, after the confirmation of the fractional charge uh, in the Laughlin state. So, and. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, they, 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 they do that for, for one fifth uh, states as, as well, too. So, and they, they do it for the, for, for, for the Morris state <laughs> uh, a few years ago. So, and uh, actually, what is amazing is that uh, Multi Hybrum, he recently actually did, well, he, he performed one of the experiments to, to measure the Marana. Uh, induce a zero bias peak, and uh, in his experiment, it's actually a bit different from the one by by Cohen Hogan. 
So he actually, in the, he, he's an expert of this noise. So, so he actually make uh, such a, a, a semiconductor wire, and then you put an S-wave semiconductor on top, and actually he put two leads on the left and right, both leads. So he's actually total, totally ready to, to perform the, the, um, the, the noise, noise me measurement, actually. So uh, after looking at this, um, we now we, we try to perform a theoretical study on to see what happens uh, using realistic uh, pr uh, experimental parameters to see in, in this kind of semiconductor, superconductor, uh, uh, heat flow structure, what happens with the noise. Um, so it's, it's very simple. You just write down the time, time mining model for your wire. And uh, with uh, just the hopping, chemical potential, uh, uh, rush, this is a rush bar string. And also you have uh, a Z-man field along the wire. You can, have, you can add impurity if you want. And then there's a pairing gap. So for, uh, and we, uh, we purposely consider a short wire geometry that the two Majorana N states in the topological regime, they can couple to each other. So if you look at the energy spectrum of the, such a short wire, you see that this is the, a topologi the topological regime determined in the long wire geometry. So you see, actually, you see some, in the, in the long wire geometry, you will see this is a Majorana N state, but this is a chemical potential. So you see what you see is a, 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 a what you expect is a flat uh, zero energy mole due to Majorana fermion. But, uh, for a short wire geometry, since the Majorana they couple to each other, and the wave function actually kind of uh, oscillates. So when you tune uh, as a function of Kf, so when you tune your chemical potential, this uh, your your Fermi wave vector kind of uh, change. So the coupling string between the two Majorana fermions they kind of actually oscillate. So but but the key point is that this oscillation is not that small. So for example here. Uh, delta is uh, experimentally, it can be, say, 2K. And then, so the, the energy scale for this splitting can be uh, uh, 0.1 delta. So if you have a shorter wire, it can be even be bigger. So you, first of all, you see this, um, this uh, Majorana end state, uh, and for the energy, they kind of oscillate. So how much time do I have? Two more minutes. Two more minutes, OK. So what you see is, um, so you have if you look at the uh, if you look at the tunneling current, you see a whole bunch of um, of uh, n state induced the Majorana n state in, in, uh, induced uh, peaks, and this peak when you have two leads, you find that it's it's it's, it's uh, you can calculate the peak. It's no longer two e squared over h, but it's somewhat smaller. But the key point is that looking at the current itself is not enough to determine the topological regime because you see that the topological regime is uh, only here. But uh, outside of it, you have uh, some fermionic end states. So those end states, they, they induce this, they induce this, um, this, uh, this uh, conductance peak as well. But if you look at the correlation, or you look at the, the shot noise, it's a different story. For example, in the topological regime, uh, the, the green ones here, meaning that your fat, that's a measure of your, so the plots here, they measure your fat, the color plot, the, that measure your final factor. So in all the region here with a small incident uh, 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 voltage of your electron, the final factor of lead one is just one. It's not two. That's because of the cross entry repressor. And uh, outside of the topological regime, you see that the final factor is two. And then you have, um, if you look at the correlation, you find that because for cross entry reflection, each lead has to contribute one electron perfectly because what you can tunnel into a superconductor is a Cooper pair, not an electron. So if you look at the correlation of the two leads, you, you see that they are perfectly correlated. The strong correlation regime only happens at the topological regime when, when you have Majorana fermions. And outside, the correlation is weak. And you can also do, so this is a differential shot noise, and this is the shot noise. And you can uh, do all the things. And then you can add disorder. You'll find that disorder doesn't really change the, the, the characteristic much. And then you also have the uh, in, even in the multi-channel regime here, we have uh, three subbands are occupied, and then you see that the correlation is is strong only in the topological regime. So I think I, I have to, if the time is up, uh, I have to stop here. Then. So I skip the, <laughs> the the last two uh, topics. Uh, thank you very much.
I just curiosity about numbers. So I guess the typical length of the Majorana is the coherence length of the of the induced superconductivity. Yes, the decay length is. Uh, yeah, and it's like like can be yeah. micrometers or something. Yeah, so one, like one micron. Yeah. Around, yeah. Yeah, and there's perhaps an issue with uh, decoherence times. Yeah. Do we have to worry about it? How cold should it be? Oh, how cold it should be. Yeah, so that's in the phase coherence length. Um, so, Patrick, you have an idea of the, the coherence length. <laughs> so, yeah. And purposely, we actually choose uh, the shorter wire doesn't hurt you much. So, uh, for example, in our calculation, it's, uh, it's, it's tight twice of the coherence thing, which is around two microns. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Going back to the uh, uh, zero bias peak. Yes. So. You mentioned, I was struck by the fact that you, you mentioned that the, the uh, even with the disorder, then the, uh, uh, this peak that you observe come in hand in hand with the existence of myofronions. Myofron yes. So, so, if, if you, so, so, so if they are so much correlated, so if they really correlated exactly, so, so, so you would just be devil's advocate, so you could have argued that is the, the evidence of myofronions. Myofron but you, you say that you, it would, be, because if you don't have myron fermions, then you would not see that anyway. Yeah, 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 right? yeah, 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 I agree. I agree. So, so, so therefore, you, so, so could it, like, would you, would, no? Yeah, no, is no. It Patrick is checking his head. Yeah, the, the, yeah the, problem, the problem is that if you have two, yeah. and, then, and then that means that it's, uh, it, it's, it's, it can be trivial. So it's, right, uh, yeah. It's trivial, but it's yeah, but the origin is from, from myron. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. The, the problem. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The, okay. The, the exact statement is the following. So you have two myrona. Okay. So and then um, the, the problem is that they can couple to each other. So uh, when the coupling is uh, weak, actually you still have some myrona nature. So and uh, what you see, what, what I mean, myrona is that. You can form a ground state which is actually uh, delocalized. One fraction of your wave function is here, another fraction is here. And uh, actually, that can happen if I, for example, exactly at this picture. So now, in this is actually outside of my topological regime. I have actually, you see two states the blue one and the green one. And actually, they kind of uh, keep the uh, Myrona nature because, in that case, they only couple weakly. They mainly couple with their partners on the other end. So your wave function, actually, of that guy is actually uh, non-local. But in the strong disorder regime, as uh, Patrick mentioned, so, and in that case, disorder can mix these two guys at the same end strongly. Once this is done, it is a fermionic case. Yeah. So it's, it's, when disorder is weak or strong, it's really it's, uh, different. Oh. Uh, yes, I'm just wondering about your second proposal. Yes. Um, you are tuning the chemical potential of the nanoware, uh, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, nanoware uniformly, or you have to local gate in it? Oh, you uh, mean ex experimentally in this case? Yes, in your picture, because I, I do not see where the gate is, or where the ground is in your nanoware. Oh, um, that's the chemical potential for us. So if you can, yeah, so that's, if you can successfully have a large back gate, and then you should be able to tune the chemical point. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think the gate should be much larger than, uh, oh, it's fine, um, it's okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I just want to say, in experiments, actually, the, the gate voltage is much, much larger than the, the data. But this is the chemical potential, it's, it's different. Yeah, yeah, it's so okay. that, that's, all, that's different. It's yeah. much, much larger. So. Uh, I have a, uh, a quick question. Uh, yeah. Um, for the uh, for topological trivial case, uh, yeah. you say the the uh, disorder can push the two uh, the angiobound states yeah. uh, down to the zero energy, close yeah. to zero. Uh, close to zero. Yeah. Yes, close to zero energy. So, is there any uh, general properties for the requ for uh, is general requirement for the disorder? For example, do, um, uh, is there general require uh, general property for the disorder strengths or the disorder type or or, or 
depends on the how many sub bands in the system and so on, whatever. Yes, 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 so yes. It, so that you can push the energy bond state to, close to zero energy. Uh, since uh, the results should not be universal, but uh, yeah, yeah, but is there any yeah. pro general properties for for the uh, requirements? And, uh, yeah. yeah. So um, for example, you need. Uh, that's one of the reasons why we consider the multi sub band case. So if you have just one sub band is occupied, <laughs> so your Majorana actually is actually very robust. So and then if you have uh, multiple sub bands uh, occupied, that means that you can have uh, more uh, fermionic end states, and in that case, it's it's easier to 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 to, to push the the energy bound to stay around. So in this case, we consider the so uh, five sub bands are um, five or six sub bands are occupied. Yeah. Okay. So let's thank Victor again. Thank you.